Hey everyone, Lou Clark here. And in today's video, I have another in conversation with an amazing female entrepreneur, Tessa Campen. Tessa and I have been friends and have known each other. We figured out since about 2013. So about going on nine years now, and we were a part of the same organization uh, back then. And it's amazing to see how Tessa's grown. I cannot wait for you to hear her story, where she started, where she is, where she's going, and all of the wisdom she has to deliver for you. But before we do that, make sure you check out the description below. I just want to remind you to do that. You can wait till the end, but check out the description below because of all of Tessa's information, contact information is there, as well as how you can connect with me outside of YouTube. All right, let's get started. I think we're going that way. I have no idea. Well, let's just go. Tessa. Oh my gosh. I am so excited. You are here with me today. How are you? I'm well, I'm well. Thank you so much for inviting me. This is awesome. Oh my gosh. You're awesome. I just love all this. It's so cool. eh? <laughs> Super cool. You and I have known each other. I don't even know how many years to put oh. on it. Maybe five or six. Oh, longer than that. I would I say so. since 2012. Okay. 2013. Okay. So we're almost we're nice. coming up to an anniversary, like a big yeah. one. That's so cool. Well, you were one of the first on my list to have, and I'm so excited we work this out and you are here and you're going to share your story and you're going to tell us some great tips and tricks that will unlock who we are as entrepreneurs, because that's what I really want to focus on. You have made some significant changes in your life over the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I would not do your story any justice to give it to the people. <laughs> so I want you to share. You can start wherever you want. Start with the day you were born. Start the day <laughs> you join Mompreneurs, whatever you want. I want to hear from you. Share your story with us. Aw, thank you so much. Oh, I don't even know where to, I'm going to start where we met really. Okay. Um, so I had just, I had had my kids and came out of, you know, a year or two of, of uh, being at home with them. And I was like, I need more. Right. And uh, I discovered mompreneurs, which is where you and I met. And I quickly fell in love with the idea of supporting other women. Now I came with no business background. I came from the dental industry, right? So I, I had a, a heart for helping people, but I knew nothing about business. Um, so I was really jumping in and just trying to figure these things out um, with the support of, you know, people like you, because you were with them already for about a year, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, worked with, with the Mompreneurs team and, and amazing you for so many years. And through that, um, I, I like to tell people that I discovered myself in the process. And so as I was helping other people, I was able to, you know, help myself and hear from those that I was serving that Tessa, you could do so much more than this. Mm -hmm. Not that what I was doing was, was wrong or, you know, wasn't right. It just, they were like, there's more out there for you. And it was really interesting because I was thinking about this actually last night, about five years ago, a friend said she had a dream that I was on a stage. She's like, it was like a Tony Robbins stage. And she's like, and I see you doing these big things. And I was like, nope, it's not me. That's not me. Right. I just, it was, it wasn't something that I saw for myself, but I believe that sometimes people see your vision for the future before you're able to see it. Yeah, exactly. And I think that was the first time that I started to allow those seeds to really grow in me that maybe there is something more for me to do. And so I just invested in myself at that time. I started reading a lot and I was not a big reader. I'll be honest. It was hard for me to get through books, but I fell in love with personal growth. Fell in love with John Maxwell, which is what I'm doing today. And uh, yeah, over the, the past five years, just really immersed myself in what does it take to be a leader? What does it take for me to grow and succeed? Because I was told that I needed to learn more systems. I needed to be on social media. I needed to have this. I needed to have that all activity based, which is important as you and I know, yeah. but not as important as 
what do I need personally? Where do I need to grow so that I can actually attain all those things that I want for myself? And that for me was just the key. And that brought me to now being with the John Maxwell team as an executive director today. So, so explain what you're doing now. So before we do that, let me go back. Yeah. Yeah. So with mompreneurs, you were a licensee, you headed up the chapter in your area and you serviced hundreds of female entrepreneurs. So I know I, I want to say mompreneurs, <laughs> entrepreneurs, you service them through in-person and online training. And then you decided I need to, to do more and I need mm-hmm. to go in a certain direction and able to deliver to serve these amazing entrepreneurs, men and women now. Mm -hmm. And so what are you doing now? Yeah, that's a good question. (laughs) I, uh, so for, for a while, when, when I left mom pairs, I was still working with solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, mainly women, because that's who I had been working with for so long. Uh, but I'm going to tell you when COVID hit, it was, I had a choice between, am I going to feed my fears that says, Tessa, you can't take this into teams and organizations where my heart was really pulling me towards. You're going to sit in fear and go, you can't do it. Or you're going to allow COVID right now to go out and just be like, you know what? I need to serve. And that's what I did. COVID hit. And it was, it was like, I decided to put all of my energy into my passion for working with teams and organizations. And I said, the worst that's going to happen is they're going to say no. Yeah. And so I reached out to someone who I honestly, I, I wouldn't have done it before COVID. I didn't have the courage to do it. And I just said, can I come in and serve your team? I know right now it's, it's difficult and, you know, we're all, no one knows what they're doing. Really, to be honest, even John Maxwell was saying, I don't know, right? If anyone says they know what they're doing, they're lying. Yeah. But I have tools that can come in and, and maybe just help you navigate this conflict that we're dealing with and crisis and all that would you be open to that and they said yes I was like okay so that was sort of the first door that opened for me and then from there I just kept putting my focus into teams and and what I do is as I help them develop their leadership culture I help them understand their teams and the people they work with Uh, I got certified in DISC in March of 2020, which allows me now to go in and help, you know, let's, let's look at the culture. Let's look at the communication. Let's look at how you're able to sell. Let's look at how you collaborate as a team and really help them do that effectively. And for me, COVID was a blessing for that because people are now having to relearn all that stuff, right? How do we do that? What is DISC? Like, I know what it is, but they're like, wait, certified in DISC, like, yeah. Like, what <laughs> yeah, so, so DISC is a, a way for us to understand our behaviors. And so every one of us is wired differently, but we're predictably different. And so myself, I'm considered an SI on the DISC scale. So DISC, is, it stands for letters. So DISC, D is dominant, um, I is influential, S is steady, and C is compliant. And so I'm a highly relational people person on the disc scale. Whereas you might be, and I think you are, you have more of the task oriented side coupled with the people oriented side, right? So natural born leader, you know, someone who is able to take things to the next level, you know, visionary, all those beautiful things that we see in the D. And so we have a bit of all of these, but Mm -hmm. primarily two of them show up in in our, our day to day. And that affects how we communicate with one another that affects our families that affects our teams and so once we become aware of what is my preferred way of communicating and connecting with people and not only how is that creating great bonds with people but how is that maybe creating a bit of dissension as well because our strengths when we overuse them can become limitations for us right so it's just helping people understand themselves and others better so that's really the gist of this Okay. So I took disc Mm -hmm. in 2018. So what do you, okay. Number one, can we change over time or are your letters, your letters? You can absolutely change. I mean, to the core, I think you are who you are, but depending on the situation, I've seen clients where they've been going through transition and their, their profile comes up and they're like, that is not me. 
And then when you dive into it, you discover maybe what was going on. So yeah, if you're going through change or transition, we'll often have people do it like six months later to see if it's truly them. But uh, I would guess you had a bit, I'm going to take a guess here. Okay. You can let me know if I'm wrong, but I, I think you had some D and some I in there in yeah, you. I'm um, very high D, very okay. high D. Yeah. And then I, and then S and C, there was like no bar. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. And you know what? And the beauty thing is, is for, for someone like me as an SI, I need D's in my life because I would just, you know, be out there just talking to people all the time. I wouldn't always get things done. Sometimes people are like, I think you're a D. I'm like, nope, I've just done a good job at staying on task and, and being able to move things forward. But I'm a true uh, SI to the heart. That's um, awesome. That's so, awesome. Yeah. And can anybody con contact you for a disc or do you yeah. do it just for teams? Nope. I work with all, you know, individuals as well, teams and organizations. And so, yeah, if anyone is interested in that, absolutely. Definitely put a link in the description below. Yeah. Thank you. So I knew you from when you transitioned out of a licensee with mompreneurs yeah. into your own being be, and then being certified as a disc registered. Uh, what's the word? I don't want to use the wrong word, but with John Maxwell, you are so, nice? yeah, so we are certified through certified. the team. So we're still in independent, but yeah, certified yeah. through the team. And so let's talk about the transition because yeah. with the pandemic, I feel like a lot of people either have or they're going through some sort of tr uh, transition, even mm -hmm. if it's just in person to online or now online back to in person. Let's talk about the feels of leaving something that was literally your foundation, right? Like mm -hmm. it, you were wrapped up in it. Like it was Tessa's family, like Tessa, Tessa's family, mom burners, right? Yeah. And you go, it's time for me to leave the nest, right? <laughs> I want to talk about the feel, the feelings, the, were you nervous, scared, what did you do to get through that? Like, walk me through if you can remember back then. Definitely scared. Uh, I think you and I have had this conversation. It took me about two, almost three years to make the final decision. I just kept, it, it, for me, it was belief, right? And I think a lot of people struggle with that. I didn't have, I had people speaking into my life saying, Tessa, you can do this, but I had not yet adopted the belief that I could. And so I just... I just kept thinking like, oh, I want to do that. But what if no one follows me? What if I never get another customer, right? Like you have a cushion when you work for an organization that, okay, you know, hopefully something will come through because you're, you've got this massive national organization backing you up. But as soon yeah. as I leave, now it's just Tessa. And even though I was going to be carrying the John Maxwell name, still, what if people don't know who that is? What if people... Maybe you don't even care. Who cares if it's John Maxwell, right? So there was a lot of fear around that, but it just, over the years, I just kept, I just had this feeling where I was like, you gotta do this. You gotta do this. And you know, you have to have faith that it's gonna work out. And so I did, I jumped and I, you know, okay, I'm gonna move on and I'm gonna do this on my own. And thankfully with the team, we have incredible mentors. I mean, I have, you know, mentors for my coaching business and and mentors for my leadership side and mentors for DISC. Like every single day I can get on a call with a mentor and say, you know, I need to work through this. Um, in fact, so I'll just share this too. I, so 2018 December is when I joined the team. And if I look at the milestones, so this year, um, 2020, I was invited in our January call to speak to our entire team about my journey. This was on just on our, our monthly calls. We have 10,000 coaches on the team. And so that was about a year and a half. And then February of this year, I was one of four on our whole team invited to come and meet John in Florida and have an interview with him. And so, you know, I just kept leaning in and, and I just kept taking the steps and and just today, I'm I'm sharing um, or submitting a proposal, like a five-figure proposal. I'm not saying this to make myself look good, but oh no, do it more than what I've made in a year. 
<laughs> more than what I've made in a year, I'm actually sitting down with a team today to say, this is my proposal to you and your team. And I, I look back and I'm like, if I didn't take that step and believe in myself and, and what I have, but just what I have, not just, you know, I think oftentimes we're like, oh, I don't have enough knowledge. I don't have enough this. And my mentor yesterday said to me, because he helped me with the proposal, he's like, Tessa, you need to stop thinking you don't know enough. Mm -hmm. He's like, I want you to go in here and pretend you have no resources. He says, because I see you, you know, you know what you're doing. But it, it's like you need that constant reminder in your life that you know what you're doing. Yeah. You're fully equipped and you can go and do this. And so that's what I just keep leaning into. And don't you find, because I'm fine this, because I stopped coaching in 2020, 2020, yeah. 2020, what the, <laughs> like extra 20s there, um, because I had to focus on our main bookkeeping and CFO firm mm -hmm. to support these clients through COVID. And I've personally come back in a new way saying I'm not doing one-on-one -on -one coaching, but I'm doing live group coaching. And I thought I'm supposed to do this. What am I going to teach? I, right. And I say this because I think it kind of leads to what you're saying is I sat down and went, okay, wait, I do CFO work all day. Why don't I just create, not just, but why don't I create a program where it teaches small business owners how to be their own CFO so they don't have to pay the thousands of dollars to have someone in there because it is a position every business owner should either hire for or know the information. So if I hear you correctly, you realized you had what you needed deep down. Yeah. And it's almost like the forest for, for the trees. So you think you don't know enough because you see your knowledge and operate in your knowledge all day long. And we mm. tend to forget that people outside don't see all this. Yeah. Right. And, it, and that's what I'm hearing. So you hi, not hired, you joined John Maxwell team, which came with amazing mentors who helped you pull that out of you. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. It just helped me see what I was capable of. Yes, I have resources that I'm licensed to now help other teams and organizations with. But at the end of the day, you know, I think it's just a Maybe it's because we're on social media all the time and we're so inundated with, you need to take this course. You need to, you know, you need to be an expert. We hear the word expert and then we think, well, I need to then work for the next 10 years or keep, keep taking something else to be this expert. But it's like, you and I both know at the end of the day, there's nothing new out there. No. Right? Like even, I mean, you pick up Think and Grow Rich. That book is still relevant today. And it was written how many years ago, right? There's nothing new. And I think if we just stop thinking we need to add so much more and more and more before we can take that step, then we're going to be just frozen in time. Yeah. And so they helped me see like, Tessa, you know exactly what you're doing and you need to lean into your own strengths too, right? If you're strong, like for you, I would know nothing about CFO. So absolutely, right? It's easy for someone outside of you to see what you should be doing, to say, why don't you do this? But you're like, oh, this is so easy, easy for you, <laughs> not easy for anyone else. Right. Yeah. And I, and so I think it's, that's another reason why I like this is that when people start really looking at what am I good at, what are my strengths? And then taking that, that will require the least amount of eff amount of effort to go out and build a business or help other people when you're working in that zone. But we're often focused on where am I lacking? And I need to improve that. No, don't focus on your lack, focus on where you're strong. And then see how you can build and add value in those areas. And so that's what I do. And what is one thing that you can say about where you are today with having these mentors? How am I supposed to word this? Okay. Mm -hmm. I have so many I want to say, <laughs> like, just like, blah, blah, blah. Like, I want to know where you think you would be today if you didn't have these mentors. Like I want to really grasp the concept of how important it is to have mentors and coaches in your life. So where do you think you would be if you didn't have that? I 
feel like I this sound, and I, this is not bad. So if anyone's listening, I think I'd still be at Mompreneur. Again, not bad. If it was, but if it was still here, revolution her. Okay, yeah, I'd maybe still be with them, yep. hiding behind my ability to go and be who I was created to be. That's right. right. And I and I think that we need people to speak into our life, and like you and I do coaching, so we know the value of it. But what most people do is they look at the investment yeah. and they say, I, I can't afford to do that. And, and the first thing I needed to realize was I'm not going to add value to myself until I see myself as valuable. And I think for many years, I didn't see myself as valuable, right? You hear this with people who talk about self-care. Well, you're not going to take care of yourself if you don't think that you're worth it. It's the same thing with growing a business. If you don't think you and your business are worth it, you're not going to invest in yourself. And yeah, that might be tens of thousands of dollars, right? But I mean, think about when we, you and I jumped into MYM too. For yeah. me, that I know you had done other coaching. That was my yeah. first. That was your that first. Was my first. I shared this yesterday with the team that I was training. I said, my first 20K investment was, you know, five, 10 years ago. I didn't have that 20K in my bank account at the time. I didn't. I was just trusting that it was going to show up, right? And it did. But that's what we need if we're going to take our businesses and our lives to the next level is we need yeah. to invest in ourselves. And most of the time that's financial, but then we need to also trust that we're worth it. We're capable. We can do this, but don't just, it's not a one-time investment. And I think that's what a lot of people don't get. Every time you level up, there's going to be more, right? And so there's always more that's going to be required of you. And interesting so. enough, because you mentioned it before that when you were leaving mompreneurs to go become Tessa, mm -hmm. that you were afraid that no one would follow, that the support wouldn't be there. And I have to say there was yeah. like, it wasn't a good riddance. It was like, really? You want to leave? What? Yeah. <laughs> right. And the talk, like, how do we get her back? How do we can, so the support was there and the women in your community, I see it on social, they're still hanging out with you. Yeah. And so it's almost a preconceived fear or a fear that we create mm -hmm. or that you created. Do you think that's because you were stepping out of your box, out of your boundary, your comfort zone? Absolutely. There's something one of our um, mentors calls the terror barrier, right? And so, yeah. you know, we go through this on the other side of that is, is freedom. But to get to that side, you got to go through that comfort zone. You got to go through the unknowns. You got to go through, you know, what ifs. And, and then there's always that pull back into safety that why would you go right now? Things are good, right? You're making money. You, you have, you have impact. And then there's the then you start questioning yourself. Well, are you doing this because you want people, you know, then you, you almost go the other way. Do you think you're so good? You have to go out on your own. Right. And we, we just talk ourselves out of it. And yeah, at the end of the day, I think as long as you're doing it for me, I do it to serve other people. I do it because I want to make an impact. I do it because I feel like I don't want to be a reservoir. I don't want to just hold on to all this amazing knowledge and material that I have, right? You want to be a river and allow it to flow through you. If people take it and run, awesome, right? Yeah. If people even never spend any money with me, but they even just maybe get value from what I share, I think I've done my part, right? So Love that. I think we need to stop being afraid of the unknown and what's to come and just honestly trust that what is out there for us is out there for us. And we got, but we got to go after it, right? We got to take that first step and it's scary. It's and it's scary. always easier when you have people surrounding you that believe in what you do. 100%. Like, I know for the two years, I was like, you could totally do, but yeah, yeah, you should do it. And you're like, oh, I don't know. I, don't know. I, <laughs> so I love seeing where you are today. If you had to go back and talk to yourself five years ago, what would you tell her? Honestly, I would just tell her to stop being afraid. Mm. Stop being afraid of what you're capable of. You know, people say they're afraid of success. I don't think they're afraid of success. I think they're afraid of seeing what they're capable of. Ooh, that's good. Right? Because 
there's, there's also a lot of responsibility in that, but I don't think, you know, I think if I would have just stopped being afraid of what could go wrong, you know, people say that focus on what could go right. My head just couldn't go there. And so that's what I would have told her. And that's what I have to tell her now every day is just tough. You got to do this. Like I said, this proposal that I'm presenting today, I felt sick yesterday. <laughs> I've never had to put a proposal like this together, but I'm like, okay, you know what? The worst that's going to happen is they're going to say no. Yeah. That's it. They say no. And I still serve the them. for you. Yeah. And I think that's the one piece people are afraid to try something yeah. and if it doesn't work, then what changed? Okay. Maybe you invested some money, right? Like you didn't, but I'm saying in general, yeah. when people are thinking of starting a business or making a change, but I hate to say it this way, but I'm going to, it's just money. And when you understand the vibe of wealth, your vibe of wealth, the way your mindset, the way you think of money isn't going to change if they say no. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And I love that you said, uh, I do this because I want to serve. Do you find that when you don't focus on the money, mm. because you're focusing on the people and serving that money just shows up hundred percent. Yeah. And I remember you saying that years ago and, and I truly believe it. Um, when you show up to serve, here's the thing, here's what I truly believe. And I, I tell everyone that I work with your opportunities are your opportunities. And so this is what actually allows me to get through the no's. When I get a no, that just wasn't my opportunity. That opportunity is meant for someone else. I love that. That's good. So if, if you go through life that way and, and then you try and you take risks and you're like, if this is meant for me, I'm going to get it. So you're now creating the belief already, right? You're, you're setting the intention, but if you don't get it, then that's meant for someone else. Mm. I, I actually, I'll just give a quick story. I had a, an, op an opportunity to work with a, a team. There it was a few phases. We did phase one, phase two, and then I set phase three. And they, for the, they just didn't take it, which was okay. I was really disappointed, but I would not have become an executive director with the John Maxwell team had I got that. So looking back, I'm like, that wasn't my opportunity yeah. because jumping to executive director was. So if we get stuck in this cycle of, oh man, I, I, I'm just not meant for this, right? Or I'm going to give up. This is, but if you start to think, okay, that's not my opportunity. What's my opportunity? and you think that way, your opportunity will show up a hundred percent. It's like when a door closes, look for the open window. Absolutely. Or at least go stand by one. Yeah. Or build one, right? Knock down some walls. Oh, I like that. Build your own door. Build your own, build your own door. Right. Make yeah. sure it locks behind you. <laughs> Don't go back. Tessa, yeah. what would you say to someone who is maybe on the fence of making a transition? in anything in life today? Yeah, I think you need to really um, spend some time in reflection and, and understand where you are and then where you're wanting to go, right? There's, you know, something called intuition that we all have, but we often don't listen to. And so I think you need to understand, well, what is your reason for this transition? I mean, COVID pushed a lot of people into different directions, yeah. um, but was COVID the final kick in the pants that we needed to go in that direction, right? And so I think when it comes to making transitions, don't make them harsh, like don't make them quick and just make them because you're feeling a certain way, right? Emotions, make sure your emotions are not in there. Um, but if you're going through transition, you have to know that with anything we do, one of John's lines that I love is anything worthwhile is uphill. Mm. So if it's a worthwhile step for you, it's going to be hard, right? You always have to expect hard, but if you have hope, hope that it's going to get better. If you have faith, faith that it's going to get better. You'll endure those hard moments, right? Maybe a five, six step back setback for you, but look what's waiting for you if you take that step right so and again i would bring mentors back in talk yeah. to someone right like make sure you 
have, you don't just make this decision, especially if it's a pretty big one on your own. I think you need to talk these things out so people can help you think clear. And again, you're not just making it based on emotion. And find mentors or talk to people who are where you want to be or are on the journey of where you want to go. If your best friend is a manager at McDonald's and you want to start a business, I probably wouldn't go talk to them, right? Go find people who are living the lifestyle you want, or at least on their way. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You want to definitely talk to people who, like you said, are ahead of you, right? I've been there. Um, they've walked that path and, and yeah, and, and make sure that people that are giving you advice are people that you want advice from, right? If your friend is at home living in his parents' basement, don't take his advice. <laughs> don't take his advice because he's not dreaming for himself, right? But we do that. We listen to people who are doing nothing in their lives. And then we yeah. take their words as truth for ours. And it's like, no, yeah. Right. And the other thing, if you tell this next step or this dream to someone and they're not happy for you, go find someone else to tell your dream to, yeah. because you don't need people like that in your life. You're going to have people who are going to drag you down and you want people who are going to be so excited. And I know you've been one of those people in my life. Anytime I've shared something, you've just been so excited for me. And yeah. that helps you see the potential for yourself, right? You don't need people who are going to say, really, do you think you should do that? Is that a good idea? Again, unless they're a mentor who's been there and they're asking you those challenging questions to make sure you've thought it through. But again, unemployed brother-in-law living at home, don't take his advice. (laughs) Oh my God, you're so good. Okay, I have one last question. Okay. Where do you feel or where do you see Tessa 10 years from now? I always hate that question. I don't know how to answer it. Um, honestly, I want to be doing what I'm doing today. Um, and being able to still have time with my family. So I don't see myself, you know, getting to a point where I'm so busy traveling the world that I can't be here for my family because I'm doing this for my family. So honestly, I see myself with a consistent flow of work teams and organizations that I work with. Um, and I'm doing exactly what I'm doing today. I'm, I'm adding value to them. I'm helping them build their leadership culture, their teams, you know, connection, communication, hopefully being a bit of a inspiration to my own kids. I mean, I'm not perfect, you right? It's, you are just going to say it's so much easier to help other people than it is to help yourself sometimes. <laughs> and it's just the reality of it, right? Like I work with, with teens too. And I do this with, with schools. And sometimes I'm teaching stuff. I'm like, man, I wish my own kids would listen to me with this stuff, but they're my kids. They know me differently. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, But at the end of the day, I do. I I hope that my kids look up to me and and they're inspired and it, you know, challenges and inspires them to go and and live their dreams. But I see myself doing this just maybe um, a a little bit when I say bigger, just more consistent. Right. Cause I'm, I'm still just taking off. Like, I really think for me, the, someone said the other day that the sky's not the limit because there's footprints on Mars. Right. Mm -hmm. I love that. I was like, Oh, I'm taking that. Um, but yeah, we'll have to see. What was the last question I asked you? I was going to say something else. Oh, are you going to be on a big stage in 10 years? Cause you mentioned that someone (gasps) saw you on a stage. If the opportunity presented itself, is Tessa in 10 years? I mean, I don't think it's going to take 10 years in my opinion, but we'll pretend it does. Is 10 years from now, Tessa going to say yes to that? So you know what? I've already said yes to this. Um, and the stage will, for me, I think will be my John Maxwell stage, to be honest. Yep. At our um, annual or biannual um, certification event that we go to, um, 10 people on our team get chosen to come on stage and do a five-minute talk. And I had already told told my speakers coach because I was supposed to go this August, but because of COVID restrictions, I I ended up just going to the virtual. Um, I'm going to do virtual in August. But I said, the next time I'm live at IMC, I told Roddy, I said, I'm applying for stage time. And so, you know, that's in front of, we usually have about six to 10,000 people in the room. And I thought, you know what, if I can speak, and even if it's five minutes in front of a whole bunch of leaders and trainers that I admire and respect, um, then I'll be able to go out and do it anywhere, right? 
So yeah. that's that I've set the intention. And so March of 2022, I'm applying for stage time um, and hoping I'll get on that stage. And you've actually already been on a big stage, but maybe haven't related it to the stage because when John Maxwell interviewed you, yeah. like hundreds of thousands of people have seen that. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. That was crazy. That was I crazy. love hearing <laughs> visions, even ones others have for you yeah. coming forward and coming about. And it's almost like, wow if I didn't go through that fear, if I didn't go through the terror barrier, yeah, none of this would happen. Absolutely. Oh my goodness, Tessa. We got to lead with faith, right? We got to lead with faith. Honestly, when I got that call that I was invited to meet John, Nathan was in the back, like outside. That's my husband, for those who don't know. And I was like, Nathan, I am supposed to leave in four days to go and see John and we're in COVID. I'm like, I don't care how this is going to happen. I'm going to do it. Three COVID tests later, yeah. like, Right. And uh, even John, he, he was just like, because I was the only Canadian out of the four. And then the rest of our John Maxwell faculty was there. He's like, can you believe Tessa had to do three COVID tests? Like he was thanking me. I'm like, you're thanking me. I'm like, this is an opportunity of a lifetime. I would have taken 20 COVID tests to come and meet you. Um, so I would have lived with them up my nose. If I exactly. Had. Exactly. Uh, but yes, that was probably one of the highlights of Honestly, my, my success journey so far was just spending um, a day and, with John. And you're just taking off. And I'm just taking off. It's amazing. Yeah, thank Tessa, you. thank you so much for investing some time in my community and sharing your story with us. I truly appreciate you, your time, your mindset, your growth. I am always a big fan. Oh. I think sometimes... <laughs> Back in the day, I felt a little competitive because we were neighboring <laughs> chapters in this organization, but we actually came together and, and got really, really close. Yeah. And I'm just so happy that you're still in my life and we're touching base once in a while and that you gave some time here. As we say goodbye, is there anything you want to leave on the table for those who are watching? The floor is yours. You know what? I'm just going to tell people to go after their dreams. And it, it sounds so corny, right? When people tell us that, but if you have something that is, it keeps pulling you, it keeps nagging you, it keeps popping up. Um, you got to go after it. You got to have faith. You got to have belief and you just have to do it. And cause if you don't, I remember Robin Sharma saying this, right? You get to the end of your life with that song still in you or that book still in you or that dream still in you, and you take that to the grave with you, nobody has been blessed by the gifts that you've been given. Wow. So whatever, if you do it and it doesn't work out, at least you said you did it, right? And so that would be my only hope and dream for everyone who's watching is to not allow yourself to get to the end of your day with that still inside of you because it would just be such a waste of your gifts and abilities. There you have it. Tessa, I love you. Aww, Thank love you so you much for sharing your wisdom. And I will make sure for all that are watching, all of Tessa's information and contact info is in the description below. Make sure you connect with Tessa. Even if you follow her on Facebook or Instagram, get <laughs> in her community. She's amazing. I'm just saying. So are you. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you Tessa. You're welcome. Thanks for having me.